So um, hello everyone. We a little technical difficulty on the other side here, but I'm back online. So um, just give me a moment here to uh, first of all get my slide presentation up uh, in front of you. Thanks very much for joining us and um, I'm so pleased to have your interest in uh, earth and environmental sciences. In a sense, what I'm talking about here is both geology, geological sciences and environmental and geographical sciences. And it's an incredibly relevant field, as you can well imagine. We're dealing with some of the key issues, the grand challenges. So I'm Dr. Kevin Winter. I'm part of the environmental and geographical sciences department and also spend most of my research activity in a future Water Institute. And so I want to share with you a couple of um, ideas, I suppose, that might give you some direction in making this choice. And what I really want to show you in, in all of this is the opportunities for science, science engagement, and the taking science into an applied knowledge field as well, and where there are some opportunities. To start off with, this is what the Global Risks Report uh, reported on in 2022, so most recent report, and the most severe risks over the next 10 years. And if you look at this list over here, you can see some things which are obvious, uh, about climate action being a failure, extreme weather, biodiversity loss, social cohesion, and li livelihood crises, coming down to environmental uh, damage, natural resource crises, and all of those that I put a tick on the right-hand side are the things that we are talking through, we're working through in the curriculum of both geological sciences and also environmental and geographical sciences, and to some extent, some more than others. But right at the very top of that list, uh, those top three are some of the things that are really beginning to engage our research activity at the moment. And so you might want to see all those things and think, well, where do I contribute? And do I want to build a career on some of these grand challenges, these big issues that are going to confront us more and more? Is this where I want to establish my career? And I think for many people, certainly in the environmental sciences, it's absolutely correct that they want to build in a career in which they want to try and contribute to make a difference. And so there's a new generation emerging here of how we begin to deal with a world that's in transition and how we get greater resilience and sustainability out of what, what we try to do in academia, in our curriculum, in our own personal interests as well. So yes, I think the answer to many people is, I want to make a difference. I seldom speak to students who are doing something purely because there's some personal goal in here. In environmental science, in, in geographical sciences, and in geological sciences, there's often a very strong sense of how to contribute. And so I guess this is a life's journey. And the wonderful thing about being at university is that we begin to discover more and more, and this is a lifelong learning, isn't it? We're all trying to find out exactly who I am, what's my personality like, what are the things that really interest me, what do I really want to get out of this uh, activity as I go through a program of uh, a degree program, what really interests me. And of course, this is the exciting part of being at a university when the world opens up for you and you get very excited about the opportunities of what uh, this journey through a degree program and all through the rest of life begins to offer you. And there's the one question. I'm sure those top three questions have been asked of you many times. Uh, who am I? You've done it through your life uh, orientation at school level, for instance, and other guidance that you've got. The top three are all the things that help you to decide on your career. But actually, we often do not ask that question at the fourth one, which says, how do I want to contribute? How do I want to make a difference? And so through science, we really start finding your interest in science and maybe beginning to develop those four questions much more seriously as you go through. That's an exciting journey that you're about to go through and uh, UCT really welcomes that. And the reason why I started off with that is because I think we have seen increasingly a new approach, an emerging approach to science. The actual activities and methodology of science are not changing fundamentally. There's obviously new knowledge coming out, but actually the future of science is moving in a very exciting direction. There's not an explosion in new knowledge, but in new ways of applying that knowledge meeting grand challenges, meeting some of the key issues that we can't sit in a laboratory alone uh, and 
do some very nice science experiments without recognizing how that is applied uh, to the world around us. And of course, every scientist would say that's exactly what I'm doing, whether I'm writing papers, working in the laboratory, I'm contributing to knowledge. But there is, in, particularly in environmental science, a sense of how does that knowledge uh, be, be applicable to these uh, world problems that I spoke about early on. So new methods. And that's often new methods emerging because of this new technologies in terms of information age. The fourth industrial revolution, for instance, is so um, important for us as we improve our ability to monitor and gather more data. And we're dealing with some extremely challenging questions, as I'm sure you know. And a couple of other ideas here too, from environmental science perspective especially, this is an integrated science, working with geological sciences, with biological sciences, with astronomy, uh, with physics, with chemistry, um, and also with social sciences as well, because a lot of our problems, as we as well know, are social problems and that the real world issues emerge from there. So how do we innovate? How do we look for new solutions? I think it's encouraging a whole entrepreneurship as well uh, coming out of uh, these kinds of sciences I'm speaking about. The interdisciplinarity I mentioned just now, almost a seamless building on of knowledge on these different questions. And the reason for all of this, we're dealing with a fairly messy world, aren't we? And the one in which sustainability and resilience become key drivers to how we change, how we change the world in which we live in, in the society in which we live in. in. And so I want to just um, finish off in terms of the uh, skill side. Um, we're looking at a new set of skills for a new generation, and I hope you will be part of this. I hope you will make a kind of choice which says, actually, that's what I'd like to do. And look at some of the things that we're doing in this aspect of the, the, this discipline about learning to see the bigger picture, about learning to be optimistic in what we can contribute to our world in which we're living in and learning to enjoy and I guess having fun at the same time. Uh, also learning from failure because that's a very important part of science, science methodologies. We are there to try and test things and, and to learn by that. What about some other th important things that are new generational skills about knowing what we want to be or how to get there? So knowing where you want to be, working with others rather than isolation. That's a big lesson I think we're all learning as scientists. And then the integrity of being guided by your own sense of right and wrong. So ethical decisions in science are so important in our changing world. And then a few other ideas that are typical of how we operate and gain, especially in environmental science, a desire to solve problems. The bottom left hand side, taking initiative and innovating in that initiative. It's a very creative exercise when you apply knowledge to some of these grand problems. How about being inquisitive about taking risks and being creative, as I said earlier on? So if those are the kind of skills that you would like to engage in in the programs through environmental earth and environmental science, then this is probably the kind of course that you're looking for. And then typically before I move on to some examples uh, that of work that we're doing, I think these are the things uh, in the next two slides that everyone asks this question. So what kind of skills will I learn? What will I be able to achieve through them? And just look at the list. They're the kinds of things that we would do typically in a science based course, uh, building analytical skills, observing in the field, working with geographical information systems, statistics, learning to program, uh, building and working with large data sets, modeling and writing skills, inquiry where the curiosity uh, is now put onto uh, onto our paper, into our writing, into our critical thinking and reading. But there's lots more to discover. And if that's the kind of way in which you think you're wired, look at those skills and uh, if they want to embrace them, this is at least some area where you can see all of that. And of course, I guess if you had to listen to anybody in science right now, they'd probably say to you, well, we're doing all of that. Um, some of them are particularly akin to earth and environmental sciences, obviously. So what do people do? If I look back on some of the students that I've taught over the years, these are some of the work that they're doing. They're involved in environmental engineering firms. They're dealing with impact assessments. Some of them have gone into business and obviously there's land, mining, water planning uh, sectors, conservation sectors that they're involved in. Geology, environmental practitioners, urban planning, conservation, research, education, lots in non-government organizations, by the way, and some are purely in the area of data analysis. 
But actually, to be honest, there's a wide range of options here, but many job titles that we still don't even know what they're going to be. And so these are almost traditional in the white, are the traditional kinds of jobs that are out there. But when you start to find your, your career path, you'll find that that job label changes dramatically. And I think all over the world, we've seen that there is no one sense that that job remains as a environmental practitioner, for instance. It changes perhaps three times in the life of your career. So very briefly, some three examples, and then I'll uh, show you these, and then maybe there'll be some time to deal with some questions in the chat box. So uh, these are some examples very quickly. Uh, this is work that I'm doing. It's an interdisciplinary research. We're working at a research site, a demonstration site in Franschuk called the Water Hub, and we turn in dirty water through nature-based processes into clean water. And we're doing that by monitoring that water using large biofilters that clean this water. And so we can use that water, once we've understood the microbiology of what's going on in these large filters, to irrigate um, small garden farms. And that enables people uh, to um, improve their food security. And those are just examples of one of the harvests we've had very recently. Here's another one called Cool Shacks, and the reason why we're doing this is that climate change is really racing at us at speed. We are fast, fast reaching that 1.5 degrees Celsius before 2030 arrives. It's going to be warmer and hotter, certainly in the Western Cape and in central parts of, of South Africa. So here's an ex science experiment. Two uh, homes built from the usual uh, materials in an informal settlement and using high technology, uh, continuous monitoring to understand what's going on. And we modified the one on the right as the model in various ways, insulated the shack, created a, uh, an, a bend or in the roof that you see on the top over there and put a little apex on it. And that made a huge amount of difference among other things we did to it. So look at the graph for a moment. This is one day, in fact, goes way back in January 20, uh, 2015, and we are doing more of these kind of experiments right now. But if you look at the blue line, uh, that's what the model on the left hand side in that, in that house that you saw, which didn't have any modifications. And you can see most of all from the early morning to eight o'clock in the morning through to 830, the temperature rose very quickly over 10 degrees Celsius. If you are old, if you've got epilepsy, if you're a young child, that rapid rise in temperature is very dangerous. When we look at the model, the one with the actual red line or orange line, the experimental shack, you can see that actually it is even cooler than the outside temperature. That should be a mitigation measure to deal with some of our uh, climate change. And then last of all, one we've just done recently, for instance, converting a canal into a river. And we're doing this because we're trying to deal with the, the ecology of the river, and we're also trying to use canals and rivers to cool down the city. And so this is a canal just very near to us. It's a couple of Saturdays ago, a lot of UCT students out there working with the soil, changing some of the soil that's collected in that canal and then planting it out with a new vegetation. And you can see the weirs they built uh, on this uh, river to try to improve the ecology. And there we are planting reeds uh, called palmate uh, plants reeds and already we've seen the difference that that has made over about six to eight weeks and the fish on the left hand side yes is a tadpole in it but also a cape galaxia a, um, a galaxia zebratus which is very unusual to find in a canal and so clearly we've begun to restore it in that way and we're having lots of fun to do it. So these are some of my students recently uh, paddling the Sunflay area in Cape Town, in which we actually paddled with the mayor. Uh, the mayor, he looks as young as us as students, but in the middle over there, the tall man, uh, and we've worked uh, with some of the quality of the water in the lake uh, over some time. And this is a celebration of some of the breakthroughs that we had there in terms of contributing uh, to some key issues. And so finally, how do you find your passion? And I really want to say to you that science has been a wonderful opportunity for me personally to work in an area where I'm able to contribute uh, in a way that helps me to find my purpose. And I think my students are doing as much as well. And so I wish you lots of success in finding your passion through science. Wonderful opportunities lie ahead, and I hope that you will engage with that uh, over the period of um, selecting to do this kind of course uh, material, uh, whether it be in environmental science or linked to other sciences, is a wonderful opportunity awaiting for you. Thank you, everyone.